on. All right, so in the previous lecture, we talked about doing graphical synthesis for a motion generation problem, and in that case, we picked the moving pivots. But one thing that we're gonna find when we pick moving pivots is we really don't have any control over where our ground pivots end up, or we have very little control, and then we have to iterate to define where our ground pivots are. Now, an alternative approach is to say, let me specify my ground pivots and figure out where the moving pivots are going to be, and that's the technique we're going to use here. Now, before we get there, we need to talk about kinematic inversion, because that's a tool we're going to use in quite a few different synthesis techniques, graphical synthesis techniques, that we'll be moving into in just a, in the next couple of lectures. So, what is kinematic inversion? The idea with kinematic inversion is that I can take a four bar or six bar, whatever the mechanism happens to be, and I can change what link is pinned to ground. So right now, I've got the white link pinned to ground right here, and I can look at the motion of my mechanism with respect to that white link. Now, alternatively, I could take my mechanism and fix the coupler, this silver link, and say that is now ground, and now look at the motion of the mechanism with respect to that as being my ground. So I can just do a kinematic inversion and change which one of these links is going to be the ground and move the rest of the mechanism relative to that. Because I've got four links, I've got four kinematic inversions for a four bar mechanism. So a lot of different options as to how we invert this mechanism. One note here is do not confer, confuse kinematic inversion with geometric inversion where we we're talking about toggle positions and things like that. This kinematic inversion is saying instead which link is ground and how am I moving the rest of the mechanism relative to that. Now we're going to get into this graphical synthesis technique and in the inversion we're going to do is basically looking at how does the ground move with respect to the coupler. So I'm going to fix the coupler and look at the ground with respect to that. So let's move on to this synthesis technique. So this is ground pivot specification for three precision positions. Again, I'm going to be looking at this canoe or kayak loading mechanism. I've got the three positions already sketched up here, and now I want to synthesize this four bar. And instead of saying, I'm just going to pick moving pivots, I'm going to pick ground pivots. So I'm going to start off by picking my ground pivots. I'm going to start with the A side of the mechanism, so I'll place A naught. And you'll notice that I've placed A naught on the upper left side of the roof rack up here. Now, the motivation for doing that is I can then say that would be a convenient location that I could connect it to a roof rack and I don't have to worry about maybe trying to connect it to the bumper or some other location that my moving pivot solutions were giving me. So I've defined that uh, position A0 and now I want to find what we call A0 prime and A0 double prime, which are kinematic inversions where we're basically going to be holding the, the uh, kayak or the canoe fixed and looking at how does the frame of the vehicle move relative to it. Now, how I do this kinematic inversion, A0 prime, which we're going to find in just a moment, this is the location of A0, my ground pivot, when we're viewing it from the second position, but I bring it back and I draw it in the first position. So what do I mean by that? Well, here I've drawn these two lines that go from position two, precision position two, back to A0. I'm gonna bring those back to the first position, and this will then define A0 prime. So just to make sure that we're looking at all the same positions or the same lines here, I'll put one dash through this shortest line, two dashes through this longer line, and then that is what is defining this A0 prime. So that's just A0 looking at it in position two, drawing it in position one. I'm gonna do the same thing to find A0 double prime, but from the third position. So I have P3 back to A0, and then I'm gonna draw that in position one. So just to make sure we're looking at the same lines, I've got three dashes on this line, three dashes here, and then we'll have four on this longer one. And that all defines this A0 double prime ground pivot down here. So once I've defined A0 that I picked and then located A0 prime and A0 double prime, if I go ahead and find the center of those three points, that would then be my moving pivot. So this is part of that kinematic inversion that I'm now going to find the center of A0 prime a0 double prime and A0. Once I do that, that's my location of A1. So to find this, I use perpendicular bisector construction. I first of all swing an, uh, swing an arc from A0. I then do the same thing from A0 prime. I then do the same thing from A0 double prime, and I construct perpendicular bisectors. This first one bisects A0 and A0 prime. The second one bisects A0 and A0 double prime. Now, you might say, don't you have another option here? I do have another option that if I had extended this arc out just a little bit farther and this arc out just a little bit farther, I would then have another perpendicular bisector, 
which should find that same intersection, intersection location. But I would encourage you always go back to the first position. And so in other words, back to A naught to A prime, A naught to A naught double prime. The reason for that is when we get to analytical synthesis, we're always gonna reference back to the first position and this just helps you, you know, start thinking in that mode. So I've used these perpendicular bisectors to find this location that I'm gonna call A1. This is the moving pivot for the input side of my mechanism or the A side of the mechanism. So now I'll repeat this for the B side of the mechanism and I'm gonna place the ground pivot on the B side of the mechanism down here near the bumper. So I've placed it right down, jump in my, jump in the gun, I'm gonna place it right down here. And you recall me saying earlier that I want to place these things up on the roof rack where it's a little bit easier. The reason I'm placing it down here is because this is the solution we got when we picked our moving pivots and we found the ground pivots. Now, if I pick the ground pivot here, I should get a moving pivot up at the solution that we had picked previously. So this just allows us to verify our previous solution and say, yeah, we're getting the same thing we would have um, if, we, if we use the other, other technique and pick the moving pivot. So I've picked this, this uh, ground pivot. And again, this is a, a designer's choice. And what I'm now going to do is use this same method to find B naught prime and B naught double prime. So I start off with now using blue lines where I'm locating this, this, uh, lo this uh, ground pivot B naught. I'm drawing it first of all from P2. So I'll use one line here, one line here, and then double on this one and double on this one. That then locates B naught prime, not very far from B naught. And then I do the same thing in position three. And again, using this kinematic inversion, I'm using the red lines now, and I could then use, let's say, two on this guy, um, two on, on that one, and then, I'm sorry, let's see, I am doing that correctly. And then uh, let's do, uh, that should have been three. And then I'll do four on this one, three, four, and then four on this one. And then that defines this B naught double prime inverted position. Finally, I need to find the center of B naught, B naught prime, B naught double prime. And I do this with a perpendicular bisector construction. Here's my arc from B naught. Here's my arc from B naught prime. I first of all construct their perpendicular bisector. And then the idea that I wanna go back to the first position or B naught, uh, here's my arc from B naught prime. I construct its perpendicular bi bisector with B naught. Their intersection is the moving pivot, which happens to be up here, and that's B1. That should be very close to what we picked previously when we picked the moving pivots and we synthesized for where the ground pivot should be. So you can use this as a, as a check to make sure the method is working correctly. All right, so once I've got all of this, the last thing I need to do is just draw the, the mechanism. So the way I'm gonna draw this is first of all, starting off from A naught to A1, that is the input side. I'll do the same thing from B naught to B1. And then I just need to finish this off by drawing the coupler. And my coupler here is going to start from I'll start from B1, I'll grab onto the canoe or the kayak, and I'll come down here to this A1 position, and then I'll grab onto the kayak over here. And that whole link right there is going to be my coupler, and that's what's going to guide the canoe or the kayak through the three different positions. Now, I have been able to pick the moving pivots, which is very useful, but you might notice on the A side of the mechanism, now this, I'm sorry, I picked the ground pivots, now my moving pivot is actually going through the vehicle. So, we improved our ground pivot, but we necessarily did not improve the moving pivot. So you're gonna find there's a lot of iteration that has to happen for motion generation, where we can change these free choices of where these ground pivots are located. I can also tweak some of the precision points slightly where maybe this intermediate position P2 can be somewhere else, or perhaps my loading position could be somewhere else, or maybe a slightly different angle. Whenever we change those, we drastically change the solutions that we're going to generate. So you're gonna find there's a lot of iteration that has to happen to generate good solutions.